now that we have some idea of what the Ebola virus epidemic really means for West Africa, let us go to some specific details. We will need to get some data on the epidemic and Wikipedia actually has an excellent website which gives a lot of information. So what we would like to do is to get hold of the data that's in that website and get it into a CSV file, which I will explain in a minute. So what we do today is just look at what the data is and then open that data in a CSV file which we have provided for you. So the Wikipedia data on the West African epidemic actually is in many places, and there are many excellent articles on Ebola and on the Ebola epidemic on Wikipedia. Here is one which has a very complete timeline of the actual cases as they occurred in the various countries, particularly in Guinea, Liberia and Sierra Leone. So if you navigate to this website and you scroll down, you will eventually get to this table which gives you that by the end of 2015 there had been 28,637 cases of Ebola where people got ill and were diagnosed with that disease and of these 11,000 had died. So that is more than a third but less than a half. And the different countries in which this happened are noted in the different columns. The dates at which these numbers were reported are given. Notice that there's seven days and then there's seven days, seven days. But from the 25th of October to the 4th of November is actually more than seven days. So the interval between these dates is not exactly constant. So this is the nature of the data and this is the data we want to explore. We've uh, given an optional lecture on how to export web tables to .csv files. And if you would like to know how to do that, then please use that lecture. Otherwise, you can just use the file that is called Wikipedia EVD raw .csv. The .csv extension indicates that this is a comma-separated file. So the values in the file are separated by commas and the raw in the file name means that it was imported as is without any changes. So once such a file exists, it can be uploaded into your Julia notebook or into your Julia working environment of any kind using the command, using the function read DLM. And this function, so read DLM, DLM for delimited file, you've got to give the name of the file in double quotes because it is a string and then you've got to specify the delimiter using a character. So now you just, whatever the delimiter is, you put it between two single quotes. Since it's a comma separated file, you will be giving the comma there and if we do that we get this output, an array 54 by 9, so 54 rows, 9 columns, and the type is any. This is because the different kinds of entries occur in different places. Here we have the number 28637, so that's an integer. Here we have a string. We as humans can read this as a date but to Julia it is just a string. Here we also have strings but they're not even dates, they're just little indicators that there are no data for these particular weeks. So the read DLM function is Julia's way to read any file that consists of lines separated into data items with a delimiter of some sort. These data items are often called fields and so the fields are separated from each other, in this case with a comma, but maybe with other delimiters. And then every row is separated into a different line. So normally we would expect that 
you get an array in which every row has the same number of columns which is the case here and so that's why our comma separated variable file read very simply into this array which is two dimensional 54 rows nine columns so that loads the data into Julia and that means we are now ready to continue with the task of plotting some of the data.